Welcome to the Solar Energy Channel, where you can get an honest inside look at all things solar. In this video, we will talk about the DC-AC power ratio. Before we get into this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell below to get notified every time we post a new video. The DC-AC power ratio is found by taking the number of DC watts in a system divided by the number of AC watts in a system. The DC watts is found by taking the number of modules or solar panels in a system times the watts per panel. And the AC watts is found by taking the number of inverters times the watts per inverter. And you get the DC AC power ratio by taking the total DC watts divided by the total AC watts. So what is a typical DC AC power ratio? That's gonna vary significantly on a number of factors. Typically, it's going to be somewhere between 1.1 and 1.6. However, in most cases, it's going to be between 1.2 and 1.4. But again, there's a lot of factors that, that that depends on, and we'll talk about that more in this video. So what are some of those factors in deciding the DC-AC power ratio? The first one we want to consider is the what the product actually allows you to do. So for example, solar edge inverters allow you to go up to a ratio, a DC-AC ratio, of 1.55. What that means is that for a 10,000 watt solar edge inverter, for example, you could put up to 15,500 DC watts on that inverter. So the first thing you want to keep in mind is that you don't want to go over what the inverter manufacturer allows that allows you to do for that specific inverter. Once you make sure you're in those within those product allowances, there's a number of other things to consider. One is what's the actual amount of sunlight that's going to hit that array? So the DC watts that we talked about before, that is the amount of power that the solar module will put out at a specific uh, sunlight, at a specific temperature. Um, so if, if those variables are a little bit different, the solar module will actually put out less production than if it's exactly that sunlight and that temperature as, as noted on, on the module spec sheet. So, there's a number of factors that affect the amount of sunlight that hits a panel. One is uh, the orientation. You know, is your, is your array facing north? Is it south or is it east and west split? Um, that's something to take into consideration. The other is the tilt of the array. So if the tilt is steeper, you'll get more direct sunlight in the wintertime when the sun is low. And in the summertime, you'll get less direct sunlight when the sun is high. If your array tilt is lower, you'll get less direct sunlight in the wintertime when the sun's low versus more direct sunlight when the sun is high. So the tilt does have a pretty significant play on how much your solar panels produce over time. Another important factor is shade. How much is your array shaded and when is it shaded? Is it shaded during peak times of the day or just morning and afternoon that uh, when the sun is not as direct? So that's something else you want to keep in mind. There's a couple other factors that are maybe a little bit more obscure, maybe not quite as well understood. One is what is the desired system production versus the available roof space versus the desired ROI of the system. So for example, if you have a very limited roof space and you want a specific production, you don't want to lose any power to clipping. You want to get as much power as you can out of those modules and that inverter as possible. And you're probably even willing to add an inverter if that's what it takes to get a little bit more power out of that system. If you have plenty of space, you can be okay with some clipping and losing some power because you can just simply add more modules to get the power that you want. And then of course, another factor is the ROI. Every time you add an inverter, you're increasing your costs. Or every time you add a larger inverter, you're increasing your costs. Yes, you're increasing your production, but you're also increasing your costs. And how does that shake out with ROI, which is something that we look at on a case by case basis. Another thing to consider is, are there any AC limit specifications on the system? In other words, does the utility only allow you to do up to 50 kW AC, for example? And if you go over that, you need upgrades or you need some kind of, of line upgrades from the utility, a lot of added costs. So that's something to consider to take in to keep in mind. If you want a specific production, you can add more panels, keep your inverter size the same, accept some clipping and avoid some of those upgrades. And then of course, system cost factors. Remember, every time you add an inverter or every time you go with a larger inverter, you're adding cost. You're adding production, but you're also adding costs as well. 
There's a couple other factors to consider over time. One is the system degradation. So for example, a system is gonna produce less power over time as the modules slowly degrade. So your system might clip today, but in 20 years from now, or 15 years from now, or 10 years from now, it might not clip as those modules degrade a little bit every year. Another thing to consider is what's the value of the clip power? For example, if that power would be used to offset your utility bill, that's higher value kilowatt hours than if those kilowatt hours are over production that you're selling back to the utility at a lower rate. So that's something to keep in mind. What's the value of those extra kilowatt hours? And then of course, consider you know, undersizing your solar panels versus underutilizing your inverters. So if you have more inverters, again, that's more cost versus more panels and how does that all play out with production? So there's a number of factors to keep in mind. One of the things that we do at Paradise Energy Solutions is we make sure that we do a customized solution for your situation. And depending on your situation, we'll accept some clipping or do a higher DCAC ratio to get you what you want, whether it's more production, a better ROI, or whatever the case may be for your situation. If you'd like to learn more specifically about solar clipping, we've created a video that takes a deeper dive into this, which you can find a link to in the description below. In addition, you can join the conversation by commenting below as well.